Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I've never been to Maine, but a small town of Maine made the news, and a lot of people sent me this story. Uh, too many to thank. Uh, my inbox is just filled with this headline. A Maine town reportedly shut down after its only clerk quit when her vacation request was denied. Taylor Ardry wrote this for Insider.com, but I also got some more details from BreezyScroll.com. And uh, I'm going to go through this story, and I'm going to be saying some town names, which I may or may not get correct. I looked up pronouncers on the internet and actually found contradictions among them. So it's difficult to do this, unless I suppose if I were to call somebody in town and ask them. But I've mentioned before, I've lived in small towns where even the locals, like my neighbors, all pronounce the town name differently. So... A tiny town in Maine effectively shut down after its clerk resigned from her job after her vacation request was rejected. So she went to her bosses and said, I want some vacation time. They said, yeah, we can't give it to you. You're too important. She said, okay, I quit. (laughs) It's the greatest thing ever. The Banger Daily News. And I've said Banger before and people say, no, that's not correct. I looked it up. Bangor is how the videos on YouTube say it. The Bangor Daily News reported that Kristen Bouchard has served as the clerk for a couple years for the town of Pasadumkig. And I also saw that pronounced as Pasadumkig and Pasadumkiag. But I'm guessing Pasadumkig is correct. If I'm wrong, I hope someone will let me know. It's located in Penobscot County and has a population of about 356 people. And that is a small town. Small town I mentioned earlier had a population of 600 Bouchard said that she made $13,500 annually and worked 16 hours a week. So her official role there as clerk is a 16-hour-a-week job, pays $13,500. But again, it's it's part-time. But she did say, I came in on my days off to complete certain tasks because 16 hours a week is just not enough to do everything that needed to be done over there. In addition to working as the clerk, The newspaper reported that her other duties included handling records, licensing pets, registering vehicles for residents, and working as a town liaison with the State Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. Bouchard quit on April 7th after the Board of Selectmen failed to approve her two-week vacation request because they said they didn't have someone to work for her. You can't leave. (laughs) This resulted in the small town shutting down, according to the Bangor Daily News. Her position is not the only one in town, which closed in late April, that is not filled. The outlet reported that Pass Doomkig is missing an animal control officer, a code enforcement officer, and an assessor. Officials are actively looking for people to take on those roles. So if you want a job, move to Pass Doomkig and apply to become the animal control officer. The market right now for qualified employees that are looking to work part-time is very difficult, said Treasurer Barbara Boyer. We're doing what we can to help keep everything going. Now, the other news outlet I found says that the Treasurer will be in a couple days a week to accept payments on things such as taxes. So some of the businesses they'll be able to keep up and running. Please call the office before heading out to do any business here as as there are no designated hours of operation. The treasurer has apparently been coming into the office to collect tax payments. Still, she is reportedly unable to register vehicles, do building inspections, (laughs) conduct animal welfare checks, or undertake many of the other tasks that uh, Ms. Bouchard was responsible for. So reading that sentence and taking it literally, it sounds like the woman is also doing building inspections. So she sounds multi-talented. It's unclear when the town will be able to fill the vacant position and reopen for business. In March, town residents rejected a budget article meant to fund town operations after town officials failed to adequately explain their reasoning for a proposed salary increase. The budget article also did not include funding for a code enforcement officer, which apparently is a necessity under Maine law. And I have people who occasionally chime in on my videos where I've done stories about code enforcement officers uh, coming out and looking at things and then deciding whether or not you, uh, you know, are b- abiding by the code. And a lot of people don't like the code enforcement officers because they tend to show up and if they talk to you, it's because they want you to change something. But apparently, Maine law requires towns like this to have a code enforcement officer. So right now, they are not in compliance with the law, as we would say. 
Town officials say they're finding it difficult to fill the position due to financial uncertainties. It is also due to the town's small population and the municipal roles being only part-time. Uh, Ms. Bouchard was only contracted to work 16 hours a week, though she said she often worked more. She's conscientious. Uh, a selectman named Brad McKechnie said, We have been left with a mess from years of neglect and are doing as much as we can to get our town back in order. I do believe in time with the team we have. We'll get past Doomkeek back in order and looking good, but it'll take a bit and it's going to be a challenge for sure. Uh, for the time being, the people of Pass Doomkeeg are relying on selectmen and other municipalities to perform fundamental government operations. It includes getting registering uh, cars in the nearby municipality of Howland. So apparently they've got other people who will help out in the interim. And the big question is, when the woman comes back from vacation, will they then offer her her job back or would she even want it? And... Um, you know, I've, I've actually heard of this before. I've actually heard of this in my life, in the past, where somebody went into their boss and said, I'd like some time off for a vacation. And their boss said, I'm really sorry, we can't do that for you. I said, okay, I quit. I, I, I've heard of that. Now, <laughs> not everyone will do that. And I'm not saying everyone should do that. But as an employer or a boss, you always look at someone who comes to you the request like that, and you weigh everything possible. And I have had employees before. I've hired people before. I've fired people before. Uh, you know, and I've had people who work for me. And I've had people who work for me come and approach me and say, you know, can I have some time off? And in my situation where I'm running a, a legal office and I had another attorney working with me and uh, we had a lot of stuff going on and my Legal secretary would come to me and say, Steve, I need some time off. Uh, my husband and I want to go on vacation. And I also knew her husband quite well. And I would say to her, okay, thank you for giving me the advance notice. Uh, make sure that all your work is done before you leave. Remind us a couple days before you leave. By the way, guys, I'm leaving Monday. I'm leaving Monday. So that we can come to you with any last minute questions that we might have. So that while you're gone, things will go smoothly. And um, I'm trying to remember, I think at least one occasion, I did bring someone in temporarily just to answer the phones while she was gone. But when she came back, we welcomed her with open arms and things ran more smoothly. But I've heard of people before who said, look, I'm at this job. It's thankless. I work like a dog. I'm working more hours than they're paying me for. I'm doing the work of three people. And I ask them if I can have a day off. And they say, no. So I quit. <laughs> I don't blame you. And so it sounds like this woman here was already doing more than her 16 hours a week because she felt that, well, I signed up for the job. I'm going to get the job done. If I can't do it in the hours they give me, I'll do it in my own time, which is going above and beyond. So as of right now, if you live in past Doomkeeg, you have issues with a whole bunch of stuff that was being handled by this one woman. And they've got other people who've stepped in to possibly pick up some of the slack, but it sounds like the slack is still kind of not picked up. So it's a crazy story, but you know something? Once in a while, you hear about towns like this that have problems, and this main town reportedly shut down after its only clerk quit when her vacation request was denied. Taylor Artery wrote that version for Insider.com. BreezyScroll.com also had some information on that, and everyone sent it to me. And by the way, quick reminder, I mentioned a while back, I'm going to start a second channel where I'm going to put all of the videos that are no longer on this channel, along with other stuff that just doesn't fit on this channel. And the channel will be called The Vault. I think I said that. And I've launched that channel now. So I've had people say, Steve, when are you putting that channel up? Oh, it's already up. It's already up. It's called Steve Leto's Vault. So I'll put a link in the description below this video. If you haven't checked it out yet, please check it out. And if you have, just disregard this message. But <laughs> the second channel is up. There you go. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Minimalism is a tool to eliminate life's excess, focus on the essentials, and find happiness, fulfillment, and freedom.